well, now I'm here, and I've got to say something. But I don't know what it is I want to say, I just know I've got to do something other than what I'm doing. I guess to give myself some time to do something, I will, uh, hmm, I don't really know. I thought maybe I would say the date and time and all that stuff. That seems a bit played out, and I don't really want to do that. I don't want to be played out. I want to be original in some way, even though that isn't a goal I think I can achieve at this time. I have coronavirus, and that makes it so I can't go outside and go on walks, which I wasn't doing before I um, had it, but I do want to do it now, and I can't. And Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Nintendo Switch is not doing it for me right now, because I want to play offline. Playing online, I feel like too many too many random factors are in play. Not random factors, but the lag factor, the one factor that really matters. I feel as if it does mess me up quite a bit in my gameplay when I play Joker, and Joker is my favorite character to play in the game. There are other characters that I have tried to play online that I've done somewhat well with, but he's the only one that I really, really like. He's got everything, and things that you can do offline Consistently, you cannot do online, and so it is making the game less fun for me as a whole to play. To go to tournaments with, to play random quick play matches, to do even extended matches with people, and even those with Wi-Fi or people with Ethernet connections like myself, it still isn't good or fun. So I needed to find something else to do, and I want to create. I want to create something. I'm not sure for what purpose it would be, or for what audience I would create something for. Hopefully, well, at the start, ideally, I would be creating things purely for myself, just because I have the drive to um, be an artist, and I want to be one. I don't know if that comes from a place of... Hmm. If it comes from a place of admiration and love and respect for the artists I do consume on a daily basis, or if there's also something more innate, something that tells me, that compels me to do something, whether that be creating music or creating a video essay talking about something in depth. But music, uh, my computer isn't good enough to do anything, really, with that. I could write mu sheet music, I suppose, but that seems super tedious. I'm not... I'd have to learn how to read sheet music, and then learn how to write it as well. And really, there isn't a reason I can't do that. I just have not done it yet. Though I want to. <laughs> I've got to pick myself up and do something different than what I usually do to be able to do that. Writing sheet music, I also feel as if it might limit my creativity and what I want to do with songs, because the way I've viewed sheet music for a while now is that I will create something, or I will think of a tune, or a beat, or whatever it is, in my head first, and I'll feel it. I'll feel it out in the, the contours of my brain. You know, I'll think up the little intricacies where I want the different things to go, how the the melody is gonna go, how like the anti melody and the bass are gonna mix with each other, what the chord progressions are. All of that I sort of do in my head, and then I put it onto the paper. The pa the sheet music is just a way that other people can see and understand what I'm thinking of in my head. Sheet music is just a way to translate music to pages so other people can then replicate it. That is what sheet music is for me. It is not a means to make the music. The music should come from within myself, not vice versa. I feel as if, if I were to start to write on sheet music, that would limit the way I think. It would become more linear, more thinking in terms of the notes on the page and what I can do with that. And there's a lot you can do with that, and a lot of interesting things people have done. 
but I don't want to really explore that realm. Also, it seems a bit tentious to be a big music sheet great nerd guy. But what was I? What was I talking about? What was? How did I get there? I need to do something. I have been listening or watching, I suppose, but mostly listening to a lot of Gbro lately, or I guess. G nay, digi dash nay, because uh, she went trans. I'm trying to transition in my head to calling her by her respected um, pronouns. It's it's not that I don't respect that. If anything, I have a lot of trans things to myself as well, or trans aspects. But I have thought of her as Digibro for a, a while now, for maybe four years. Maybe a little less, maybe three years. I think four is a pretty okay uh, description. And that's that's a fourth of my life. And if we cut out the first eight or nine years where I don't even think, where I can't even do anything with anything because I'm still learning how to exist, then that's half of my life I've thought of her as Digibro. And so now I have to change it in my head to the other one. I'm trying to transition that. I'm also maybe... Uh, whoops, I dropped my fidget spinner. I'm trying to transition myself as well to become more girly or trans, or m maybe not transition myself, but definitely I want to explore that area more and become more girly and cute, because... I really like cute things. I like watching cute girls doing cute things. Anime, well, I haven't watched maybe any of them, but I like, I'm realizing now that a lot of the anime I do watch, I don't watch for the story, or maybe I do watch it in some part for other things. I'll take Kill a Kill, for instance, because that's just what's on my mind. The story in that show is pretty good, has a lot of layers that I don't understand because I haven't thought about it in depth or read about it in depth. The main... And it also has good, good, like, art design and direction, whatever that means. At the very least, it fits my aesthetic uh, qualities that I want in something. It fits those, which I haven't defined for myself yet either. So it's very vague, but I enjoy the show aesthetically. But mostly the reason I watch the show is that, uh, well, one, the opening, actually. I really like the opening uh, serious by Air Oi. The music to it. The opening sequence is also really cool and fits well. Just that that song is really good. It has a very good use of um, uh, non-modal harmony. What's it called? Functional harmony. That's what I'm looking for. It, it does everything quite well within... It doesn't bring a lot of super new ideas to the table, just everything it does is done well. It's mixed pretty well, though I wish the drums were a bit more prominent within the song. Well, actually, I take that back. It's not mixed... It's not mixed horribly. It's not mixed badly. But it's listenable, and it's good enough to convey the... to allow me to enjoy the ideas that are being conveyed in the song, I suppose. Uh... I really like the the chord progression. It's very simple. I think it's a, a four. It's like four, 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 five, 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 one, three, six, uh, four, five, minor six, minor seven. No, that doesn't work. Uh, well, whatever it is, it has this sort of this. Ha it has a very good use of the five and one cadences that it does, and it has this sort of Bouncing. Not like the song doesn't bounce, but it just moves from place to place really quickly. It has this like, oh, we're like we're doing the high section, now we're going down the low, but we're like bouncing back between them. It's a very fun song. Uh, the piano melody playing over everything, sort of sort of like harmonizing with the vocals, uh, is really nice. Like uh, in the chorus, it has this little three note jingle. It does. That's also sort of emulating the three-note jingle that the guitar did earlier in the verse. Voice is sung very well. I have not checked out the lyrics just because I don't really care about lyrics and songs. Well, not that I don't care about them, but that I... My sister 
really likes lyrics, and I really don't like my sister. Therefore, I cannot like lyrics, because I have to differentiate myself from those things I don't like. Maybe I, I do certainly understand and enjoy lyrics of things, and I can find meaning in them, but I've sort of shut myself off from that whole realm of music, uh, literary, musical, like, lyric, and that lyrical analysis, maybe, is what you would call, because, uh, first of all, that's what everybody likes about music. Everyone says, oh, I like this song, because the, not a, they're not that, but, oh, this song is so good, and its lyrics are just packed with meaning. Well, what does that even mean? Like, if, if the, if the lyrics are packed with meaning, if every song that you like has lyrics that are packed, whenever I listen to music, lyrics often don't mean anything to me. They often touch on subjects and ideas and matters that don't resonate with me personally. And that's because I haven't listened to music that I haven't found the music yet that has resonated with me in terms of its lyrics. I, I haven't found it because I haven't searched for it because I've barred myself off from that entire realm of lyrical um, meaning. Um, well, uh, I'm, I'm bored of talking about that already, you know. So, what should I move on to? I want to talk about something. I want to have interesting things to say and to be able to communicate my ideas with others. And yet I don't have interesting thoughts all that often. I have, I certainly think about things, but I think about things on maybe a surface, like another surface level below the surface level of things. I, I can go one layer deep and then I'm stuck there and I'm stuck feeling angsty and sad and un unfulfilled because I can't do, I can't say what I wish to say at all. I don't know what I want to say. I don't know what I came here to do. I came here to do something but without a purpose in mind to do. It's just sort of been flailing around for the past uh, 12 minutes and 30 seconds. I don't know if I'll ever post this or if anyone will ever hear it. I don't think so. But I do want to somehow pour out my thoughts that I'm having right now. Though I find that I can't think super well. I can't articulate the thoughts that I have very well. Um, I do tend to have... I tend to think in terms or to think in words. I, I don't often... Well, as I, I just listened to, uh, I'm not sure where I put my phone. Actually, I do know where it is. I'm not going to go grab it. But I was listening to Digi Bros, the, the Way of Ever Branching Paths or whatever it is, the third or second episode. I think it was the third one. And he mentioned that he, his, he, talked, he asked his mom after doing his uh, neurotyping chart, uh, well, do you think in words and his mom said words almost never which is an odd feeling for both him and myself because i think in words almost exclusively there are times where i just let my feelings and emotions and impressions take over me and i try to experience them viscerally but that is not my modus operandum that isn't my default existence state that is a state that i have to put myself in or that i end up in after going through a really sad moment or sad moment is wrong but a really a really thoughtful day thoughtful isn't right either just where i have to somehow get into the mood of just feeling things and letting letting things flow as they need to within my head to be able to take me where I need to go in my mind space. Uh, usually, though, I think how I talk. How I talk right now, I think that way in my head, and I try to think, talk, or discuss with myself and other, other versions of myself in my head different ideas to get their understandings of them, though it often doesn't end up very well. Yeah, I, I, you could probably tell, I can tell, I've noticed that I don't, 
have very much confidence in myself to do anything. I don't have confidence issues in the way you would think you would have them or the way I think that a standard normie person would have confidence issues where, oh, like, I don't want to put myself out there because, you know, I don't think people will, I guess, maybe, maybe it's the exact same way. I don't feel confident in myself that I can do anything I put my mind to. Or that, that's, that's a bad, I actually do believe I can do anything I put my mind to, but I don't have faith in others to like what I have to offer them. Maybe it's not that I don't have faith in others, but it's, I don't have faith in myself to provide enough substance to others to want to have somebody stick around with me. But also, that can't be verified because I don't hang around a lot of people. I haven't put myself out into social groups or circles or ideas a lot. I've only ever talked to the people that I've chanced upon at school, essentially, and that's it. Uh, my friend, my closest friend right now is Jordan Hare, Jordan Ryan Hare, and I met him just by chance. I think I was, I don't remember the exact circumstances, but he describes it as I was singing uh, anime English openings by Liddy and Lee on the swing while just swinging back and forth, and he ended up joining me because he also liked anime. So that was a by chance thing, and we both happened to have a lot of the same similar thoughts on a lot of things, so we've stuck around and we like each other that way. And um, other people at school I've met, I've talked to and interacted with, and uh, I think I've, I've met and talked with them just through chance as well. I haven't ever gone to a place with the intent of putting myself out there, and then having other people enjoy what they have and like me and hopefully validate myself and also have me like being around them. I don't like the way I talk. The way I talk doesn't really mesh with the way I think. I did say earlier that I think essentially the same way that I talk, but it's not the way I want to think. I don't ever... I feel I use the same words too often in the same ways to try to describe different aspects of things, and it doesn't work out. I end up sounding like a broken record most of the time to myself. Now, I've never had that complaint from anybody else I've talked to, or no, honestly, no one ever really complains about me just because I tend to be quiet and pretty non-confrontational, so what would you complain about? Unless you happen to be a confrontational person and you wanted to better me, which seeing as I don't often put myself out there, I, I just tend to gravitate towards people more like myself, which are non-confrontational. And so I don't have those people around to tell me you change or, hey, David, you're doing this thing wrong. Maybe you could do this better or, wow, you suck at this. I also don't know if I could I'd be able to take that kind of criticism on a daily basis at all or... Uh, maybe not on a daily basis, but just... I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I think. Well, I don't want to give up. That's why I've shouldered on for as long as I have. That's like 18 minutes, 19 minutes in. Which I, I keep saying the time because I have a thing up with the time. Which maybe I'll actually minimize it so that way I can't see what time it is. Unless that pauses it. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, it doesn't pause it, it looks like, so I can just sort of have that somewhere else. But I don't want to give up on this yet. I don't want to give up on myself. First of all, because I want to waste time, and I want to feel like I've created something right now. So that way, one, I can not be lying on the floor like I was even just half an hour ago, hugging my uh, roll cake body pillow Kamikotan and just letting emotions sort of envelop me. That's that's nice and all, but it's not good. It's not the state I want to be in. I want to be doing something because I'm always doing that. I'm always feeling emotions. I'm always doing. I'm always. Ah, I can't articulate what I want to say, but I'm gonna shoulder through it and I'm gonna push through it. I, I always am angsty and I think about things in not great terms and I get caught in these loops in my head that just spiral around and around 
and it doesn't get me anywhere, and it doesn't get anyone I talk to with anywhere, and I end up breaking down over it, and it just, it spirals out of control, and it's not good. I don't want to be there anymore, so I want to soldier through this and do something for, honestly, I haven't really said this in my head, but I want to make this an hour long of just me talking. It can be about anything. I, I, I need to just soldier through and create something so I can feel as if I've done something. And maybe if I keep doing this, I can somehow learn things about myself and make myself a better talker through making these video recordings, which I may or may not uh, show to anybody. I, I would want to, hopefully, but I don't think I am interesting enough at the moment for anyone to want to listen to the whole thing. Maybe, maybe if you want to hear the inner workings of some random 16-year-old dude who knows somewhat about music and somewhat about, like, philosoph philosophical, that's not, like, em emotional thinking, maybe you'd enjoy it. But I don't think I'm articulate enough to really make my points made, which I don't even have points I'm making. I'm just talking for the sake of talking. I've already come back to this point multiple times because I can't think of anything else to talk about. <laughs> well, I guess if there's nothing for me to talk about, I'll talk about nothing. And by nothing, I mean Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. I'll talk about my relationship with that game. I love Smash Bros. I love fighting games in general. I didn't know I liked fighting games, but I really do. I haven't played that many traditional 2D fighters. I haven't played Street Fighter. I haven't played Tekken. Uh, not really because of lack of trying. Well, I guess because of lack of money. My family has always been a Nintendo family, and the consoles that we have haven't had the games that I would want that would need the games that would need to be on them are not on the systems for me to play and also i have not been interested in them up until very recently around a year ago maybe two years ago i started playing smash bros uh, i played smash bros ball at my friend noah allen's house back in massachusetts uh but at that time neither of us we just wanted to hang out with each other and we both thought that Link was the best character because we both really liked the Legend. We both quite liked the Legend of Zelda franchise. Now, though, I've taken the game to another level where I'm trying to understand the core aspects of neutral and disadvantage and advantage and ledge trapping and edge trapping and how to break apart somebody else's gameplay and stuff out what they're doing and call out all of their bad habits and their good habits. Because no matter what anybody does in Super Smash Bros, there is counterplay to it. Anything somebody does is punishable if they do it consistently uh, and you know that they are, you figure out when they are doing it. If you know somebody's going to do something, you can punish them for doing it. And that is essentially what the mind games of Smash Bros becomes. It becomes a guessing game where both of the opponents yourself and your opponent are moving around the stage making your movement not uh, ambiguous so that way the other person can't tell what you're doing so then when you do actually do something you don't know when it's going to happen and then you don't know what they're going to do and the metagame of that is figuring out when they like to come in and attack what they like to come in with to attack and then also executing how to stop them from fighting in that moment or stop them from doing what they are you know uh, okay player maybe uh, will see that no figure out those two things and then they'll just not interact when it happens they'll avoid it you know so some guy comes in with like a big move from the air maybe every time he does like three dash dances okay well maybe a worse player or like a, just an okay player this is sort of where i am right now will roll out of the way or shield it okay you didn't lose anything there but a good player might dash back or dash under it so that way they can take full advantage of the situation and capitalize on it and win neutral themselves by knowing when the opponent is going to come in or you could also take the route of a more uh, campy and non-confrontational style of gameplay, where you 
can harass your opponent from farther away and you don't even really have to worry about when you're going to go in because you're not going to. You can hit them from far away with projectiles. Some characters can do this better than others. I actually think Joker has one of the best camping moves in the game, Gun. It doesn't kill. It doesn't need to kill. All it needs to do is harass the opponent uh, from a far distance so that way they can't just sit around and do their movement. They have to come in eventually or they're going to take little bits of chip damage from Joker's little dinky gun every second, you know? And that builds up over time. And you end up doing a lot of percent. And so it forces them to make the first interaction rather than you. Because if you make the first interaction, it is always going to be harder. For, it is so much easier in Super Smash Bros. to whiff punish than it is to actually win neutral. Because there are so many facets of neutral. So many counterplays to the plays and aggressive options you have. That it becomes very difficult to consistently win neutral. But it's also, this is also difficult, but it's much easier to wait for the other person to commit to something and then just kill them for them doing the wrong option, for not getting their 50-50 right. Which has sort of led the meta of Super Smash Bros. Ultimate to be this semi-camp style where at least this is how MK Leo plays. Also, somewhat Mars and Nairo and Lights, but they, they tend to be more aggressive. But MK Leo, the best player in the world, he stays on the fringes of the battle, and he will use Joker's two moves, Aha, which is this little projectile that goes out and hits someone. Uh, and it, does, it doesn't it does do that much damage, but it does chip damage over time. And he'll use Gun to camp in the opponent's face. Rather than running away the whole game, he'll do all the cool schmixy movement stuff, but he won't commit that often. He'll just use Gun and Aha to harass the opponent so they have to get in first. Sometimes, MKLeo, just with the way he plays, he will go in eventually, just because he doesn't camp all the time, but he, most of the time, he's camping, is what a lot of you does. If you watch any of his Sam Sora, who's a Peach player, sets, it is just him using his movement to outcamp Sam Sora, and right now, Sam Sora doesn't know what to do against that, and that's why earlier, when he was trying to win against uh, Peach's stuff, it's hard. You can't really win against Peach in neutral because she can... Well, it's very hard to because she has that float so she can do it at a very obnoxious angle. She can do it from really high. Uh, she can do it from kind of low. She can mix itself up. She can just drift back if you try to hit her. And if you overshoot really far, she'll just drift back with fair. Oh, you got hit and took 20, idiot. Okay, well, maybe I'll try and camp her. Oh, but then she has her turnips to pick up and throw at you. It's a very good game plan where the opponent has to commit to something because of the peat, because of the turnips, but also it's hard to commit to anything because Peach will whiff punish you, and she has some of the best damage output in the game. The easier combos will take you from 0 to 60, and the better ones can 0 to death you on certain characters on specific stages. I've seen both Esam, though he doesn't play Peach, he labs out some stuff just for fun, and uh, Mute Ace do some really nutty Ernest Peach combo stuff off of down tilt, like float nair ab stuff. And so it's really hard to get in on her for any reason or time. That's MK Leo. The way he deals with that matchup is essentially just by camping her out. And then, okay, well, if you're going to camp me out, I'll pick up my turnips. But Joker has the Rebel's Guard. And if he figures out when Peach is going to throw her turnip at him, he can't camp because then he just gets more Arsene and then he can camp even better. Arsene is makes Joker a better character overall, not just because of like, oh, it kills, you can kill people earlier, you have down and up smash, you have like fair one drag down stuff, but also that gun has a much longer hitbox and Aha goes farther. Those two things allow you to camp a lot better and do more damage. And so then, also, it kind of forces the opponent to come in eventually. Because if not, then you just do damage. Then you just steadily do damage as Joker. But what this has done to the game is made everyone kind of camp because it's optimal, especially online. If you commit to any option online, it is very easily whiff punished because of the extra added lag time. Because doing anything precisely 
You don't have to be super precise to whiff punish, except on some specific moves. You do have to be precise and have a game plan to win neutral. And so the game's meta has become very camp based. It's become about when you go in and when you camp and how you intermix the two. That is what Ultimate is about me and i don't know if other smash games are like this because i've only really played ultimate before this i didn't have any of the other smash games my mother got me super smash brothers brawl or the wii in and during a christmas because christmas is my birthday but it ended up uh, not working out uh the disc broke and so I haven't played that. But the only Smash game I really played before that that I can compare it to would be Super Smash Flash 2, which is what I would play on pretty much every day after school for a long time. That is the game I would do. That and or Minecraft. Minecraft was before, and I would do mods and stuff with that. I have an interesting relationship with Minecraft now. The game is really relaxing and really calming. I love the music. I love, um, it's not Toby Fox, uh, what's the, uh, the guy's name? I love the composer for that, C418, that's his name. I really, Minecraft has amazing aesthetic for me. The gameplay is good for the first 20 minutes. That first time you boot up a world and you're just exploring, and you make like a little dinky hole in a hill, you know, and you get your first tree stuff, and you're just looking around at the landscape and taking it all in, that is when Minecraft is at its peak for me. It is less when it's at, at, at its peak when you then have to go underground and you have to grind for a while to find that iron, that gold, and that diamond to progress to maybe do the Ender Dragon or get more things and survive longer than you want to. Which, I mean, older Minecraft... You didn't even have to really get that much stuff to survive because it was easy, even on hard. Now they've actually made the game quite more difficult, and if you don't have something at night, you will die because things will just kill you, especially skeletons. They used to, they were never bad, but they're uh, really scary now. If you get caught by like a pack of three of them, you could die if you don't have the right gear. And so it is incentivized much more now to go underground and obtain those necessary resources. But that isn't that interesting to me because it's the loop of, it's that exploration, exploration loop, as I described earlier, uh, instead of l seeing these lush environments, because that's what Minecraft is really good for me for. It's when I'm roaming extreme hills biome, looking at things and surveying the weird landscape. That is what Minecraft is at its peak. You're doing sort of that same thing, but now you're in some cramp, cramped gray space that there isn't much to do in, and you have to constantly sort of manage your resources by placing down uh, torches, and when you run out, you've got to get more of those, you've got to make sure you've got down enough wood to do things, and that part of the game is not appealing to me, which is a shame because I do also like building things, which is what happens after you have that big resource management rush. It's hard to sort of displace those two. Like, Minecraft has set things you can... Phases that you go through. There's, like, the beginning phase where you survive, the mining phase, and the building phase. And then if you want to, you can... I guess first place phase could be called exploration. There's exploration, mining, building, and then you do more exploration so you can find more things resource gathering so then you can go make more building that's the sort of the loop of minecraft i only like two out of three of those and that second phase the resource uh management gathering one isn't fulfilling to me and so i don't exactly enjoy playing the game that much unless it's with others in which case we can just sort of dick around for a while and so it doesn't matter what the game is actually happening. It's more of a communal experience that I'm making connections with others that makes it interesting. But on its own, it's not fulfilling for me. Now, Minecraft is a very good game. It's a good, well, I'm trying to phrase what I'm thinking. Minecraft is a very good game for other things both in its code which is relatively simple but also in its concept and in its 
its like simplicity. Because of how simple the game is, you can adapt it to so many different forms. I have honestly not played base Minecraft that much. I maybe only really toyed with that for the first two or three months after I got it when I was and right afterward, right after that, I kind of got bored of it, which I couldn't place why then, but I can place now it's because of the management things. But since Minecraft has such a good base, I can find other things that people have created because Minecraft, you can create so much with it and share that with others. You can use it to make other new interesting art. Like servers, for example. Servers... You can go on to, depending on whatever server, you can have so many different things happen on them. There's maybe you just go onto an anarchy server where there are no rules and you can hack and stuff and you just sort of like do whatever you want on those. And it's more of a vanilla experience. But then you can also go over to a server. So that would be something like 2B2T. That's really the only one I know because I don't honestly play anarchy servers that much. Then you can also go over to a highly edited and highly crafted experience such as Hypixel, which they've taken the game and sort of made their own game out of it. A lot of it is are these segmented mini games that they have, but there's also its own charm and aesthetic to being on Hypixel that you can't really find anywhere else. You can find a more highly crafted experience through that. Because Minecraft is a game where you can do with it what you want, and maybe what I want is to experience what others have made for it. Maybe it isn't actually making my own things in the game. There's that sort of thing. Then there's also like the sort of faction server thing you can do, where you build up a group and you go and sort of pit yourself against others in this team, not a team deathmatch, but uh, this sort of Hunger Games-esque world where... You have, I mean, it's Hunger Games-esque. It's not as in, like, you have your own tributes and stuff, but everyone's part of their own little clan, and you go and make your base, and you stake your land, and you get your own resources, so that way you can conquer more land and make your thing bigger. And maybe there are a lot of interesting stories that can arise from that. I've had some stories where, at the beginning, I made this base, it was really bad, I didn't claim it, and it got raided immediately. And, like, wow, that was horrible for me. I... But like I had found a community because I had got people to join my faction, which I think at that point I had called Zelda just because that was sort of my whole identity when I was younger, was that I played The Legend of Zelda. I had found people that, hey, they want to be with me for this thing. And then they left when they realized that I didn't know what I was doing to host a faction and to claim land and to gather resources. And so that had made me have to better myself so people would come back. And then maybe later on in the same server, those same people that were part of my faction are part of different ones, and they end up raiding me. And then there's like these Ludo narratives, not Ludo narrative, there are these narratives that build up, and these stories and ideas, and it's so interesting and dynamic. There was this one time I had a big, me and my sister played on the same server, and I had a more, I had a smaller faction that had more elite players, I like to think, and I knew what they were doing, and I trusted them. But my sister took a more uh, liberal approach with it and let anybody into her faction at all. And so she had one of the biggest factions on the server just because she would let people in. A lot of the times they were fodder and they weren't good at the game and they just wanted to be part of a group. But in large numbers, they could do stuff. And she was really formidable. But also that led to power struggles and conflicts within her faction because different people had different levels of power and it was hard to really manage where everyone stood when there were so many people. It wasn't a gigantic server. I don't know how many people it had. In my head, I like to think it was hundreds, but that seems a little not real to me now. It's been a while since I've played on that server. But like the different ideas of power and the different ways you can structure that. Like she had the big group that wasn't that was pretty chaotic, sort of like a um like a band, like a group of bandits that just everyone would just really visceral and they were really out to get you. Since they were all part of a unit, none of them on their own could do much. None of them on their own were very smart, but together they could conquer anybody because of their large numbers and because of their sheer ferocity. While with mine, I had a group of better players who I trusted more and all of us sort of knew what we were doing in the game. And so we could fracture off and do separate jobs 
and do separate things correctly rather than having a bunch of people who could maybe not do a lot. It's, it's interesting. I could get that sort of experience from Minecraft or going away from servers even, you could go to modding. You could take this, this game that has such a good base and you could add on your own thing to it and you can find what other people have made with it, not just within the base game's elements, but within your own elements. I have spent so many hours playing the Pixelmon mod in Minecraft because it gives me a reason that it gives me a reason for that second part of gameplay because it, it becomes more interesting when I'm going and exploring caves when I also find cool and new Pokemon to capture there. That gives me something and it also helps with the exploration because now I'm not just exploring lands for the aesthetic beauty of it all, but I'm also exploring it for a use, a use to maybe find a new Pokemon, or level up my own Pokemon. It's really a match made in heaven. The the systems of Pokemon, but the battling, and like the, the leveling up, and the care, and the love you develop for them, mixed with the exploration, and the sort of grindiness, but expressiveness of Minecraft, they fit really well together. And I have, oh, I've spent so long just playing Pixelmon with friends on like a server I've made, or just on my own, because it's fun. And I don't really know what got lost for me along the way, but somehow Minecraft for a while lost its charm for me. Well, actually, it didn't lose its charm. It did, but it's because I spent so long playing it. And I've realized that I don't care. I don't know why I'm talking about Minecraft. I can talk about that more than myself and my feelings, I suppose. Well, I don't want to give up. I'm going to keep... That's my mantra right now. I do not want to give up and let this go to waste. If it sucks, it sucks. And I will eventually make something that does not suck, making things that do suck. That's a hard pill to swallow, but I'm not what I want to be now. Though it makes sense, because I haven't put any work into being the thing I want to be, it does not feel great. It's a hard pill to swallow, that I am not an artist that I respect. I don't respect myself because I haven't created anything of worth. Or... Not even anything of worth, but I haven't created anything, really. I've written some things. There are moments during school breaks where I've really felt inspired to write something. And so I wrote some teenager edgy schmuck fest. But also there are some interesting thoughts in them. I, uh, there's this one I wrote about this guy. Actually, I don't really want to go into talking about that because you can just go read those on your own if you want to. But... I wonder how the audio quality is on this. I know my computer microphone isn't that great, but it isn't that bad either. I'm more wondering how loud I've been, how I can change that, uh, whether I need to be closer, like around here, maybe try and whisper more when I talk, or maybe maybe I even need to be farther back, because I actually do things with a very sensitive mic. It might be clipping a lot. And if it's clipping, I don't know if my computer is even powerful enough to run a software like audacity or anything really to make to add compressors and uh eq it so that way it doesn't clip all the time but i don't know how that happens i took a class a while ago from my teacher mr russ who's the coolest person i know maybe will ever know i don't know about that he definitely has been the most influential person on in my life so far well maybe he has maybe he hasn't i don't know if i can say that definitively but i took a class from him about audio engineering so now i know somewhat about eqing and compression and different types of microphones and how to mic up a room how to mic up different instruments like how to mic up a guitar or a bass or drums or vocals what different types of mics you want to use for those things. It was a very interesting class. It taught me a lot about that sort of thing, but I haven't really put any of it to use yet. And maybe by making this, whatever this is going to be, or whatever I want to call it, I'll be able to put some of those skills to use by doing 
something, <laughs> doing working with audio. The audio itself does not matter what it is. I could just be yelling or I could just be like, I don't know, doing ASMR and flipping books or something, or I could be doing music. It doesn't matter. As long as it's working with audio, I'll have a chance to refine my EQing skill. So that's another benefit that could come from me making this. But I sort of feel as if I'm running out of steam, which that saddens me that so quickly after starting this, I don't have something to say. I don't have anything interesting to say. Not, well, maybe that's a bad way of looking at it because I, I've never had anything interesting to say in the first place about this. And so why stop now? Maybe just talk about the things that I feel I can talk about so I can get better at talking. So one day I will be able to make the things I want to make. What are those things? Things that move people and help them better understand themselves. That is what I want to create. Use that through whatever art I make, somebody else will be able to look at that understand a faucet of themselves they didn't maybe they didn't know it was there or maybe they didn't want to acknowledge it or maybe they just actually couldn't put it into words or put it into whatever medium i end up describing myself to but they'll be able to look at the thing i've created the art that i've created and find a piece of themselves in it and find Maybe comfort. Comfort might not be it, but they'll be able to find something there. And that's what I want to be, and that's what I want to create. But I don't know how to get there, how to go about it. In theory, I need to start by creating things. They're going to be bad for a long time until I eventually figure out what I want to do and what people like about me. And so I just have to put myself out there and do things until then. And if I don't make it there, uh, I can make it. It's just a, it's a matter of sticking up for myself and keep keeping at it, be talking about stuff. Maybe bringing a topic every time would help. That way I have a something to speak of, both for myself and for others. Yeah, I, I don't usually make promises or commitments that I don't think I'll keep. And so I'm a bit reluctant to make this, but I want to say that I'm going to try creating one of these every day and maybe bringing a topic or maybe not, but just talking about things. A video log, uh, vlog, what do you know? Uh, and making them for myself, making them for others, but mostly doing it so I can be doing something and creating something because vlogs don't take a lot of effort to make. As in, they don't take a lot of editing unless they're a very heavily edited vlog, which just wouldn't be. I would just upload this wholesale or the whole thing. Maybe I'll... I want to make a commitment to do this every day. Because I need to be doing something. I need to get out of my own brain and say some things and maybe take feedback from other people. And yeah, there's a quote, or I don't know the full quote, but uh, when Miles Davis or John Coltrane. As legend was talking to Miles Davis, he he said, "Hey man, I don't know how to end my solos. I often I get lost in the sauce of doing things, and I don't know what I can do to end them properly or with finality." And Miles Davis looked at him and said, "Just take the goddamn horn out of your mouth." And I feel that way right now. Like, oh, how can I end this to be meaningful somehow? Well, just take the goddamn horn out of your mouth. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off.